are going to discuss a concept known as a heat engine. A heat engine is a device that converts thermal energy or heat to work. And as we know, as we started right at the beginning, thermodynamics was the science that started from trying to make maximum amount of work from heat. And uh, uh, so uh, these are called heat engines. And these typically take heat from high temperature sources. These high temperature sources could be uh, from burning, uh, burning coal or burning natural gas or nuclear energy, which creates a lot of uh, high, very high temperature water, right? Or any other high temperature source. So, uh, so it could also be sunlight, for example, right? So, and this take, these devices take heat from high temperature sources and convert some of that heat to work. And uh, so these are called heat engines. So uh, symbolically, they are represented uh, with a circle with a heat engine uh, written, HE written at the center. And uh, so I have, let's say, a thermal energy reservoir, and then I transfer some heat to the engine, and some of that heat conver is converted to work uh, of by the engine. And as is typically the case, as we will see going forward, some of that heat, uh, not all of the heat can be converted to work and some of that heat is dumped out uh, to a low temperature reservoir typically. And so this we will call Q out and this is another reservoir. So because the temperature of a reservoir does not change even though I uh, add or subtract finite quantities of heat uh, to the reservoir, as a thermal energy reservoir can be then quant qualified or can be labeled with the temperature that it is associated with. So I'll call this TH, uh, H standing for high temperature and TL as L standing for low temperature. So I have a high temperature reservoir, other, in other words, a source and a low temperature reservoir, in other words, a sink. A heat engine typically takes in heat from a high temperature reservoir source and converts part of that heat to useful work but part of that heat is not converted to useful work and that is given out to a low temperature reservoir or a sink, right? And during the operation of a heat engine, sometimes we also might need to put in some work. And uh, so this work is called W in, right? So uh, what is it that we need a heat engine to do? We need, um, to convert most of this Q in, if, if it were up to us, we would like to convert 100% of Q in to W out, right? And uh, of course, minimize W in, right? So what we want is that we want to maximize maximize uh, W out minus W in uh, divided by Q in. And this is therefore also the definition of the thermal efficiency of a heat engine. And that is defined as W out minus W in divided by Q in. Right? So this is uh, thermal efficiency. Many heat engines use something called a working fluid to get the job done. I mean, in many cases, the working fluid is just air. In some cases, the working fluid is water or steam. And whatever be the working fluid, typically a fluid is used. And a fluid is used uh, for two purposes. One, a fluid can be utilized for phase change purposes. And so we will see in this chapter why phase change is useful, why one might want to do phase change processes while doing energy conversion. And the second is that fluid can be moved very easily uh, from one place to the other in a continuous manner. And so therefore, few fluids are very useful. And typically, these fluids are called working fluids. Right? So uh, working fluids are used in heat engines to uh, carry out the processes that a heat engine is trying to carry out. Right? And many of the heat engines operate continuously, which means that I can also define efficiency in an instantaneous efficiency as uh, W dot out minus W dot in 
uh, divided by q dot n uh, if it is a continuous And uh, as I said before, heat engines use working fluids and if it is continuously operating working fluids, then these working fluids typically undergo a cycle. That is, they start and end at the same point. So I am going to show an example that shows how these working fluids start and end at the same state. A very typical example is electricity generation using coal and that is how a majority of us get electricity in our homes, in our offices, in our commercial establishment and industries, right? And uh, how is this done? This is done by heating water using um, heat from burning coal, heating it to make it ste into steam and then expanding the steam in a turbine to get work and then condensing the steam back to liquid water and then pumping it to a higher pressure and then repeating the whole process over and over again. So if I were to look at the TV diagram, uh, process 1 to 2, although I have shown an exaggerated increase uh, in the uh, TV diagram, this temperature increase is very tiny and that increases the pressure uh, from 1 to 2. So typically, uh, you increase the pressure from atmospheric pressure to nearly 25 bar, right? And then at 2, um, the fluid undergoes a set of heat exchangers which take its temperature up to the saturation temperature at that pressure. And so 2 and 3 are on the same isobar. And then um, further, the fluid is heated in a boiler and this takes it, temperature, this takes it to state 4, which is the saturated vapor state. And then from 4, there is again a set of heat exchangers that superheat the vapor from 4 to 5 and the superheated vapor enters what is called a steam turbine and it expands in the steam turbine while turning a shaft and this steam turbine then turns a generator which produces the electricity and the expanded steam uh, now comes to state 6 and this steam at 6 is, is either on the saturated vapor line or just inside the saturated vapor line and then this steam is uh, condensed back to a subcooled liquid by removing energy in what is called a condenser. And so typically this is uh, the cycle that is followed in a coal power plant, in a subcritical coal power plant. It is called subcritical because none of the states are above the critical point of water. And so um, as you might notice, the water, if you take any point in this cycle, the water is in a particular state and then it goes through many other states, but it always comes back to the same state. So this, in other words, it undergoes a cyclic process. So many of the heat engines actually operate in cyclic processes and uh, typically the working fluid either actually undergoes a cyclic process or can be approximated to undergo a cyclic process. And so therefore, we will be looking at cyclic processes a lot. But before we do that, let us quickly look at where energy is. Uh, going in, where is energy coming out in this particular example. Uh, we can see that the work is done on the turbine. So there is W out here. We can see that from 2 to 3 and then from 3 to 4 and then from 4 to 5, all of these three, uh, we can see that heat is being added to the working fluid. So uh, there is Q in uh, from here and then we have a pump from 1 to 2 which obviously requires uh, energy to run and so therefore there is a work input that is coming in to the system here W in and uh, there is um, steam being condensed from 6 to 1 and that requires removal of energy in other words a heat loss uh, to a low temperature reservoir or a heat sink and that typically is the atmosphere itself and so uh, we have a Q out here. Right? And then, uh, therefore, I can write the thermal efficiency of this heat engine as W out minus W in uh, divided by Q in. Uh, that is also equal to W turbine 
minus W pump divided by Q n. Right? I know there are lots of questions going on in your mind as to what we can do alternatively and why we do it in this particular fashion. And I would like to discuss that in class um, and, and I hope that that will be a very good discussion.